Hello and welcome to Steve's Vintage Model Builds. As you might guess, I'm Steve. How are you? Uh, the face in the avatar is Jack, the cat. But I'm Steve. Okay, and so um, I'm planning to do this uh, like today's Tuesday and I'm planning to uh, do this as a, a premiere with live chat uh, on Saturday or possibly Monday and it's a subject that's uh, kind of near and dear to my nostalgic heart uh, many of you would have seen this before uh, it's been around a long time it was originally two of the, the uh, most of it um, in 1972 and uh, then it was just like a, you know, it was a half-track personnel carrier uh, with seats and a canvas cover. And uh, then briefly in 1989, um, uh, they added new parts and uh, made it as an armored cab type uh, 37 millimeter uh, single flat gun. And then in 1991, they added the new parts, uh, which uh, which included the uh, the Flakwirling and the figures, different figures. Uh, previous kits had figures, uh, except for the the uh, 37 millimeter. I'm not sure if that came with any figures. There's none shown on the box in any case. So um, yeah. So, yeah, this is, uh, as I said, it's uh, near and dear to my nostalgic heart. Uh, I, uh, I built this kit as a team. And uh, it was, uh, uh, well, to me at the time, it was a masterpiece. <laughs> uh, it was the pride and joy of my collection. Uh, and I had it in a big diorama, uh, winter colors with the eighty eight millimeter uh, flat gun uh, with the came with the uh, Zundop motorcycle and I think it's nine figures yeah nine figures uh, that's an awesome kit they were both awesome kits and I had them in a huge diorama uh, and anyways so uh, I uh, as I was joking to Peter Oxley in an email, hoping to, uh, to replicate uh, my masterpieces from decades ago. So, um, okay, so let's take a look at it here. Uh, obviously, it's uh, to me a kit, uh, 135 scale, uh, and it's the 8 ton semi track and 20 millimeter flat veerling. Uh, we all know what flak is. That's the uh, the anti-aircraft exploding shells, and Vierling, uh, Vier is the you know, German word for four, and Vierling uh, basically means four of a kind. <laughs> and uh, so there it is. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do this uh, again uh, with the winter colors. And. Bit of a rant about packaging. You know, people who have watched the channel before, uh, and I'm sure who have dealings with Amazon, uh, if it's really important to you that the box be in really great shape um, and everything pristine, then uh, it, it's better to get it from uh, your local hobby shop. And if you can't do that, uh, I don't know. So, uh, the kit arrived in this bag, you know, the Amazon bag, and in big letters here you can see, lighter than, a, than our smallest box. Well, isn't that nice? That's just beautiful. It got squished. And there's that. Grease is here. Grease is here. And on the back. 
okay. Uh, of the four places it was supposed to be taped, only this one was uh, still intact. The others had popped because it got squished. All right, so as usual with these older Tamiya kits, uh, we get instructions in black and white, a uh, separate booklet uh, for uh, English and Japanese. And uh, again, we get a nice photograph of the completed model. And another thing Tamiya is great about is they, uh, they give you tons of service and history notes. So, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, uh, but uh, uh, basically, um, in the interwar years, uh, they, they uh, you know, the, the German military noticed and learned that, you know, track vehicles were, uh, were highly useful, very successful, and um, they weren't speedy, that's for sure, uh, but... Um, you know they could they could uh, move across move across terrain uh, as well as roads uh, that otherwise might not be uh, passable. So uh, this is the eight ton uh, SD KFZ seven slash one SD KFZ uh, or Z depending on where you come from uh, and how you talk. Um, uh, but basically, it means uh, you know like most words, it's a, it's a long jumble of whatever anyways it basically means special purpose vehicle so special purpose vehicle yeah in english it's three words in german it's one word <laughs> okay so um yeah and uh so this particular one we've all heard of the hanomag uh which was another manufacturer uh agricultural manufacturer uh but this particular one was manufactured by kraus Maffi. Uh, of Munich and uh, they started uh, working and, and developing half tracks in, uh, in 1928 uh, there were about 1200 uh, uh, produced altogether and uh, initially they were as uh, you know as we saw from you know they were used as troop transports and uh, and to tow uh, the uh, the 88 millimeter flak or anti tank gun along with the crew. So, um, but later in the war, uh, as you know, as Germany was being pushed back basically on all fronts, um, you know, they, they were forced to improvise and, uh, you know, they didn't, uh, uh, especially, you know, after, uh, You know, unlike the, the big 88s, which were, you know, basically they were, you know, that's what they used to, to try and shoot down bombers and stuff. Uh, but this was for a more closer anti-aircraft type of uh, defense um, uh, for uh, fighters and low-flying fighter bombers and so on and so forth. Uh, as, as the Allies were able to penetrate uh, with their air, air assets deeper and deeper. And push the Germans back. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, twenty millimeter, four uh, twenty millimeter uh, anti-aircraft flak guns, and they they mostly traveled uh, with. Um, Uh, with uh, with the Luftwaffe late, very late in the war. Um, so, I mean, again, as Germany, as, as, as the Nazi German forces were being pushed back farther and farther and farther, uh, especially after D-Day, um, and the Russians were uh, steadily advancing uh, in the east, um, They kept having to move their planes, so they, it was difficult to have 
uh, you know, entrenched uh, anti-aircraft uh, emplacements and so on and so forth. Uh, so, you know, they would travel and uh, travel along with uh, wherever the airplanes had to go. Okay, so the kit cost uh, approximately, well, it was 50, 58 dollars and change. So, came in under 60 dollars. And, um, so, but it has, it has tons of features. So, uh, you know, we'll talk about that when we get to the, the value part of things, but uh, here we go. Uh, as it said, <laughs> they're in their winter clothes. Uh, so if you just wanted to put them up there, that's fine. Uh, or, you know, just put a light, very light, uh, what do you call it, uh, primer on them. And, uh, you know, it's not like they're, they're dark color that needs to be uh, saturated with, with white primer. So you get to retain a lot of the contours that way. Okay, uh, removing the, the uh, staples. To me it's famous staples or infamous. As they call them, hot kiss fasteners. Okay, and so uh, I mentioned some uh, kind of some. I mentioned you know I had good features. Uh, one of the things is this: uh, they give you this uh, vinyl mesh, and The vinyl mesh goes along here. Um, these were down uh, when the guns were in action, uh, but when they were transporting or not in use, uh, these were folded up, and they had like you know you know they had a like a grate. So that's a nice touch. Uh, you can also get photo edge for this. Uh, for those who are so inclined, I don't know why anyone would willingly get photo etch, but that's just me. All right, so uh, first sprue bag has uh, two sprues plus the uh, the vinyl mesh, and uh, here we have the the the, uh, the base of the back. I don't know if you can see there. Some light on this. Let me see if we can get it a little better. Anyways, it's nicely contoured. There's a little dent there, or, but that's okay. And uh, nicely contoured. Oh, geez, it is damaged. Rats. Well, what do you think, people? Yeah, we'll just make that damaged canvas. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, but yeah, that bugs me when, uh, you know, uh, when stuff gets damaged in transit. That's no, no good. So, anyways, it's all going to get painted. There's nice contours on it, as you can see. And it's all going to get painted. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that can, I can work with that. That's easy enough. But, like I say, it's uh, <clears throat> irksome when stuff like that happens. All right. So, uh, sorry for the delay there. Uh, we uh, had some messages from the lighting department. And so we've adjusted that. And okay, and so uh, here's what we get. And, you know, okay, it is what it is, right? <laughs> 1972, 
and so it's uh, it's mostly one piece which doesn't upset me that much um, uh, you know it's uh, there's there's other kits out there um, you're not going to really see the underside anyways and also my experience has been you know uh, with uh, with not very many exceptions when you have to put everything together uh, there's always problems uh, it never it never sits flat and never does this or that or uh, you've got all these little tiny parts and it, it, it's yeah can be frustrating so um, I'm in this for fun not frustration uh, I understand that some people like to work through challenges like that and uh, they're welcome to them <laughs> okay so yeah here we go so we get that And uh, sprue bag number two uh, has one sprue. And again, here we go. Um, I don't know whether to call this crude detail or not. Um, you know the you know the, these things were banged together from, from sheet metal and stuff, especially these things. You know, I mean, they were you know they were built for utility, no fancy stuff, as it were. Ooh, almost used a bad word, but I didn't. Uh, and this, you know, well, yeah, okay, fine. It also has detail on the name for the nameplate there. So uh, for the manufacturer plate, yeah. And then we've got we've got the tub uh, tub for the um, for the driver's compartment, and we've got the leaf springs here. As usual with Tamiya of this era, we've got all these just come together in one piece. But uh, no flash, no absolutely no flash whatsoever. back up a bit with the figures speaking of flash and there's uh you know there's some seam marks but you're always going to have to clean up a little bit of that anyways and uh yeah very nice Even on the small parts, like these bayonets here, there's no flash. None. Okay, and um, so yeah, here this is a nice touch for uh, Timia of the time. Uh, you get actual, I don't know if they're rubber, vinyl, whatever, uh, tires. Get metal axles. Oh, the clear part for the the windscreen is in here too, and also there's a little nut and bolt uh, for attaching the back to the front or whatever. Uh, we'll see that when we go through the instructions. It's kind of weird. Uh, certainly not prototypical. <laughs> Okay, and so uh, now, uh, okay, so here we go. We get to the wheels. Uh, now, a 
of auto wheels. Uh, you get the you get these vinyl spacers. Um, I don't know if uh, this one could have been motorized back in the day. It doesn't look like it. Uh, most of those were the tub type. This isn't the tub type. Anyways, okay. Okay, and yeah, and so we get these tracks, and they're, they're kind of almost look like they're trying to be metal. They're trying to look like they're metal. Anyways, they're supple enough and everything. But the thing is, uh, I saw this. Uh, I don't just jump right in for kits anymore. I always do research, you know. And if there's a YouTube video out there, I'll, I'll you know I'll watch the watch the YouTube video. And I think it was uh, can't remember who it was, but in any case, they didn't like uh, like many. Modelers, uh, they didn't like the you know the vinyl tracks that are provided with the kit, um, uh, so they ordered uh, aftermarket. Uh, uh, you know the individual pieces that you link together, and everything was great there. But the problem was uh, the way this model was created. Uh, wheels are too big and the tracks are too big uh, based on the prototype so the aftermarket stuff that uh, the reviewer had ordered uh, was correct uh, for the 135th scale 8 ton semi track uh, it's it's this stuff where there's a problem to me it doesn't matter because uh, I, I just use what's provided and uh, uh, viewers of the channel and subscribers will know uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure no rivet counter and uh, you know my goal is to yeah, it, it, you know it is to complete a good assembly and paint it up decorate it weather it and, and be happy with it when I'm done uh, other people you know, they, they like to, you know, go to the nth degree to make sure uh, that, you know, everything's accurate and everything's exactly this and that and whatever. And that's fine. That's great. Uh, that's one of the great things about our hobby. Uh, but if you're like that, then uh, this kit's probably not for you. <laughs> and as we all know, you know, one scale is one thing and another scale is another thing. Uh, I'm not going to, well... Uh, let me put it this way uh, some 135 figures are awful small and some 135 figures are awful big <laughs> so you know you know how that goes everybody who's watching knows how that goes okay and so uh, yeah we've got a, a little bent piece here but nothing broken off same here uh, from the squishing decal set which I'll discuss in a minute Okay, and uh, the uh, the last uh, bag here is uh, two sprues, and it's the guns, the guns, the magazines, the the whole gun assembly, and um, there's very nice detail, nice heavy riveting here, which you would expect. Again, no flash. Uh, the 
guns are good. And again, there's aftermarket you can get uh, for these and the pedals here. Floorboards and pedals and so on and so forth. Yeah, and you know, there's stuff that's been kind of kicked around here. Nice detail on the magazines here. I don't know if you can see that. So, uh, once again, very nice. And uh, the other thing, too, is, you know, to me, it's really good about, uh, and they've always been good this way, uh, about uh, packaging their kits uh, to minimize any kind of possible damage. Uh, so, I mean, we've got blistering here. Um, you know, the box was pretty badly squished. I mean, so bad it popped the tape on three sides as well as one side. Uh, of the glued package um, but except for that one one bit of damage there on the on the canvas everything was good okay so uh, before we get into the instructions um, I want to talk about the decals. Um, decals. Okay, so um, we got a nice decal set here. Everybody knows about Tamiya decals. Uh, they're thick, but I like them. They go on good. With a bit of softener and a bit of TLC, uh, I find that they uh, they 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 sink in very nicely to uh, most of the kits. Uh, that's not what I'm going to talk about, though. Uh, so first of all, we get all sorts of different things. We've even got little decals for the helmets. This is you know put that up there. Uh, so for the insignia on side of the helmets and uh, there's even two decals of or I guess one decal I don't know how that works I don't know what this is looks like a Imperial Stormtrooper helmet thing And it also, no, in any case, so, um, again, my, my, my camera's not the best, uh, but if you look closely, there's, uh, uh, there's, uh, three designations of decals. There's a WL which was uh, Wehrmacht Luftwaffe and uh, that, that's where you know they would have been doing that uh, there's WH which would have been just the regular Wehrmacht army uh, and they'd have been responsible for uh, non-aircraft related anti-aircraft uh, attacking ground troops Bases, whatever the case may be. And then there's a third set. And the third set is SS. Shit stuff. Uh, I don't think they can get away with these these days. <laughs> Although you never know, because there seems to be plenty of Nazis out there, I'll tell you. Uh, and they ain't blonde, blue-eyed Aryans, let me tell you. So, anyways, not to get all political about it, but I won't be using the SS. I will uh, probably be using the Wehrmacht. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, 
one I forgot to mention too, as with the uh, Altamia kits now, uh, you get the tech tips. They're great tips on how to do different things. There's also tips that we'll see in the instructions. Love you, Lady Tamia. Oh, I don't like to talk about personal things very much, but uh, some of you may know my wife is Filipino and uh, um, Filipino Canadian, and uh, we've just booked a trip for uh, to go for uh, more than a month, from November twenty fifth to uh, uh, December thirtieth. Uh, we're gonna go to the Philippines, be there for Christmas. Ooh, ah. And Christmas in the Philippines is really something. Boy, oh boy. They actually start at the end of September. <laughs> All the lights go up. and I, Oh, it just it, it, it's just incredible. It's unbelievable. So anyways, yeah. So And so since we're going to be there for more than a month, I'm going to go to Japan. I'm going to go to Shizuoka Tamiya headquarters. Yes, indeed. Uh, take care of something on the bucket list there. So, uh, really looking forward to the whole trip. And uh, it'll be great to fly into Tokyo and take the bullet plane, train down uh, to uh, the Mount Fuji area. And go see the Tamiya Museum and the, the, the Tamiya store. Mount Fuji and all that stuff. So, anyways, yeah. So we're very excited about that. Okay. So uh, I'm sure you're not. So we'll get on with, uh, with what I'm doing here. And here we go. We get. Please read before this. Study the instructions, da 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 da. And then they start one, two, three, construction of the pedestal. And I, I mentioned about the side notes, and, and uh, yeah, here's a good example. They give you photographs of what it's supposed to look like. Okay, I mean, this was before the internet, right? Uh, uh, so, unless you were a subscriber to a, an expensive modeler's magazine, or what was expensive for most of us kids, uh, you know, th this was great. It gives you it gives you great detail. There's shading. It's not in color, but there's shading, and uh, you know, you can see the contours of everything and the way it's all supposed to go. Way to go, Lady Tamia. And yeah, so uh, here we go with construction of the pedestal. It's a big kit, uh, but all the steps are. Are, are simple. Everything's engineered to go together beautifully. And I've seen YouTube videos um, of how, how this kit goes together. I remember from when I was a teenager. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, except for the size issue on the wheels, which like I cared about in 1974 or whatever it was. Uh, uh, perfect, beautiful kit, perfect kit. Not too many parts, enough parts, etc., etc., etc. And again, uh, they uh, they give you a, a picture here of what the underside's supposed to look like. And I think there's a winch under there somewhere that, if you really wanted to, you could wind it with some wire and go wild. Uh, and then. And, Instructions for the road wheels shows you how to assemble the wheels, how to put them here, put them there. Uh, even though it's not motorized and, you know, who cares if it's going to roll along the floor. Uh, some people do, but most people don't. Um, uh, the, the spacers are nice. They provide a nice, uh, a, a nice uh, good fit uh, without having to use cement. Okay, and then we get into the the, uh, the driver's seat tub. And uh, there's a folding seat here at the back. Uh, you can have it up or down. It's going to be up because uh, I'm going to have it in operational position.
And as I turn the page on the instructions, <laughs> um, the format of instructions. Um, sometimes it's nice to have a booklet, stapled booklet, or whatever the case may be. But uh, I don't know why people really have a problem with this. The pages fold back easily. You can tear them down if you need to for any reason, etc., etc. So, I saw a video the other day a guy was complaining about because they weren't like Revell instructions. Like anybody should compare Revell to Tamiya. Hmm? Pistols at dawn, sir. Anyways, here we go. Um, so, this is great, you know, they show you uh, exactly how everything's supposed to be positioned. How to put on the mesh. Da -da, da -da, da -da. I might send a note to, Z to Amazon about the, the damage of the kit. Um, you never know. They might give me 20% off. That's 12 bucks. But if that goes back to the merchant, I'm not going to... Yeah, anyways. So, and yeah, so we get uh, five figures. Commander, carrier, tracker, left loader, right loader. And uh, on the rear of everybody, uh, the gas mask canister, canteen. Da, 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 da. And then we get all the little bits and pieces that go on the fenders and things. And uh, the underside goes into the top. Uh, pretty basic stuff. You've already done the most complicated assembly. And how that goes on. Painting and uh, applying the decals. Um, like I said, they've got for the helmets, which is nice. Uh, tactical marks. Uh, 24th Tank Division. Luftwaffe, etc., etc. So, yeah, you've got all those different markings. And, oh, that's what that was. It was the death's head of the... That's what that decal was. I couldn't figure out. Uh, we're not going to use that. So, unless it's Halloween. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so, and it shows you where everything goes. Uh, how to position it all. But it does say location of accessory parts are free. In other words, uh, you can put them any way you want. You can put them that way. You can put them that way. You can have this guy down on the ground with the binoculars, uh, which would probably be better rather than being standing there with things spinning around. So, yes, there we go. talking about these are great for lining the, the bottom of uh, small paper uh, cardboard boxes and doing a little bit of painting all right so we'll bring this in under an hour time to rate the kit and um, I always put up a card, but I don't know. I don't know if the card shows up. It doesn't when I watch the video, even when I watch it off my channel. 
So um, I don't know what goes on there. But in any case, it's uh, it's it's there in the community section, and uh, just look up how I rate a kit, and uh, the videos there as well. Okay, so um, yes, near and dear to my heart, as I said at the beginning. All right, so uh, for um, for the ratings, I use a, a usually a twelve point scale. Uh, 10 standard points, 2 points for packaging, up to 2 points for sprues, uh, up to 3 points for parts, and up to 3 points for instructions. Each category can also uh, get uh, an extra quarter point bonus for what I call a wow factor. Um, things like, you know, putting in the the vinyl mesh for the sides there. You know, they could have just molded that in plastic and expected you to blah, blah, blah. But uh, but they didn't. And so uh, it's still good that they do that. Uh, uh, along with, uh, you know, the, the metal axles. Don't have to do that either. So. Okay. And uh, then uh, up to one full point for value. And uh, I look at value, of, of course, uh, you know, the cost of the kit, uh, but more how many hours of enjoyment can I expect to get out of it um, with minimal frustration. Uh, and, you know, also, you know, hey, five figures. Uh, that's good value. Uh, you know, you don't always get figures now. So, uh, as a matter of fact, you rarely do. Okay, so packaging, uh, external packaging, uh, uh, we saw at the beginning, uh, it's going to end up being a one. Um, the, the, the box art, uh, the outer box, which is normally a good, good sturdy box. Nice box art, uh, but still, I got to take off a full point uh, for the outer packaging, and I'm going to deal with that later. Okay, as far as the screws, are, spru um, pardon me, as far as the sprues are concerned, uh, they were complete, no flash, no uh, molding bubbles or holes, nubs, recesses, ejection pin marks where they really shouldn't have been. And um, so everything was good there. And a quarter point bonus on that uh, for no flash. And I mean no flash. Even those little bayonets, for heaven's sake. All right. And uh, so and then we come to parts. Uh, the quality of plastic, as always, with Tamiya. Great. Uh, nicely detailed. Maybe not as fine, but... I mean, uh, you look at it, these were <laughs> agricultural products, <laughs> agricultural machinery, uh, not exactly known for its finesse. Um, there were no warped or uh, broken parts, although there was the canvas, uh, the canvas, uh, uh, whatever thing that goes over top, hood. I don't know what you call it. Anyways, um, that was damaged. Uh, decals were fine. So, um, yeah, that brings parts down to uh, two and a half, I'm afraid, um, with the damaged parts. Not to me his fault, but it's part of the criteria. Lastly, instructions uh, could get up to three points. Uh, excellent general service and history notes. They're clear. They're only in black and white. So um, they're laid out nicely. Uh, so a quarter point off for black and white, uh, but a quarter point on uh, for the 
half a page of uh, service and history notes. So that brings it back up to a three. So, uh, and then I'm going to give it uh, three quarters of a point for value out of uh, out of one full point. Um, I think it's a great value kit. So there you go. Uh, that brings us to nine and a half, but uh, I'm going to put a special bonus on of one full point, just this time. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's not to me his fault that uh, they screwed up the shipping. Um, but at the same time, They they uh, they planned their packaging in such a way that uh, you know the damage was minimal, and I can certainly work with it. And as we can see here, you don't have to have the canvas cover either. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to put it on there anyways. So okay, so uh, yeah, so that brings us to uh, ten and a half. Ten and a half. It's a great kit. Uh, as I said, the only real criticism you could have really is the, the, the wheels and tracks aren't accurate. They're, they're too big and too wide for uh, what was actual. But hey, going strong since 72. So there you go. All right. So uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, and uh, I appreciate everyone who's uh, stopped in for the, for the chat. And I uh, hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Some people might call me boring. Some people might call me conversational. And other people might call me a jerk. But uh, hey, I am what I am and I are what I are. I is what I is. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thanks again for joining me. I appreciate all my subscribers. Uh, as of the making of the video here today, uh, 412. I appreciate everybody's time. And, uh, and I appreciate, you know, I get so much support uh, uh, from, uh, from friends in the community. Whether it's uh, uh, Sue and Plastic Monkey and others over there at uh, Ice Queen 7's channel. Or Peter Oxley, uh, Zinzan, you know, uh, uh, Garfield down there in Kitchener. Oh, sorry, Garfield. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. Um, so yes, I appreciate it all, and uh, there'll be uh, there'll be some uh, completed stuff coming up very soon, and hope you're enjoying it all. So uh, thanks for stopping by, and. We'll be seeing you soon. Bye now.